Hello, sports fans and Stratomatic fans. I'm here with another Mismatch Monday. Today, it's going to be a little different. Um, I'm going back to the basics. Back to the basic game because the matchup today is the 1968 Tigers against the 1991 Cleveland Indians. The 1968 Tigers were 103 and 59 and the 91 Indians were 57 and 105. However, the reason I'm doing the basic game is because for the 1968 set, I only have the originally issued 1968 set by Stratomatic. I don't have the, uh, I don't know if they did a reissued set for 68, but I probably didn't buy it because I have their original one. And so, since we're using the original 1968 set that I bought on eBay probably years ago, we're going to use the basic game. However, we will be using catcher arms and outfield arms because I looked those up. So, we will be playing with those on, um, you know, in instances where somebody tries to steal or someone needs to take an extra base. But... Uh, other than that, there will be no ballpark effects. There will be no righty versus lefty. It's just going to be the result right off the straight off the uh, basic cards for both teams. Even though I do have, uh, you know, advanced information for the 91 Indians, it wouldn't be fair to uh, do the Indians on righty lefty and uh, and Detroit on uh, straight up. So. For the even playing field, or as even as it can be with uh, a team that won over 100 games and another one that lost over 100, we're going to just do the basic game. And, you know, actually, I like the basic game. I really do. Um, I was playing it. In fact, I only really got into doing the advanced game for the purposes of the channel and the fact that a lot of people would prefer to see the advanced game. Uh, people like my good friend Scott Needle, who does not subscribe to playing anything but righty-lefty. So uh, to people like that, I apologize. But, uh, you know, if you want to uh, enjoy the basic game, here it is. So we're going to go over the lineups. The visiting team will be the 68 Tigers, and they will line up as Mickey Stanley in center field, L. Kaline in right, batting second, Norm Cash will be the first baseman today, batting third. Batting in the cleanup spot will be Willie Horton, the DH. Bill Freehand will be the catcher and bat fifth. Dick McAuliffe will be the second baseman, batting sixth. Batting seventh will be Jim Northrup, the left fielder. Don Wirt will be the third baseman, batting eighth. And Dick Trzewski will be the shortstop and bat in the ninth spot. And... They will be, that lineup will be facing Charles Nagy. He will be the pitcher for the Indians today. In 1991, he was 10 and 15 with a 413 earned run average. And so let's get started. We've got Mickey Stanley leading off. And he gets a fly ball to center field. So he's out. And that means also I will be using the uh, basic X charts when an X comes up. Al Kaline is up. He gets a 5-8, and 5-8 will be a fly ball to right field. So we got two fly outs to lead off the game for the 68 Tigers, who are a much better team. And Norm Cash will be the first baseman and batting third. And he gets a 3-8, which is a walk. So Norm Cash is aboard with a walk. That's the first base runner that Nagy has allowed, and he is aboard. And Willie Horton, Willie Horton, who had 36 home runs and 512 at bats that year. And he's in the right column, but he got a single instead of a home run. We will just play station to station on that. Um, and that's the first base hit that Nagy has allowed. So the Tigers, after getting the first two outs, have gotten two guys on. And Bill Freehand, the catcher, is up. He gets a 1-6, and that's a walk to load the bases. So the bases are full here. 
So after getting the first two outs, Nagy is in trouble with the bases loaded and Dick McCall at the back. And he gets a 6'10", and a 6'10", is going to be a double, and that'll knock in two runs, and so Maggie has just fallen completely apart here. Um, two runs have come in, and I don't think the Tigers need to even really consider sending, um, sending freehand. Or wait a minute. Um, yeah. No, and he's a 1-12 to anyway, so they won't do that. Um, and Northrop is the batter. And he gets a 5-8, and that's going to be a fly to right. So that is the inning, but two runs come in for the Tigers in the top of the first inning. And so already the uh, Indians are in trouble. As they are losing two zip. The lineup for the Indians will be Alex Cole leading off and playing center field. Felix Fermin will bat second and be the shortstop. Carlos Baerga will bat third and play third. Albert Bell will bat in the cleanup spot and be the right fielder. Carlos Martinez will be the DH batting fifth. Mike Aldrete will be at the first baseman batting sixth. Mark Lewis will bat seventh and be the second baseman. Uh, Joel Skinner will be the catcher, batting eighth, and Chris James will be the left fielder and bat ninth. That lineup is going to be facing, you know it, and I know it, Denny McClain, who won 31 games in 1968. He was 31 and 6 with a 196 earned run average, and here's Paul to lead off against him, and he gets a ground ball to the shortstop. So there's one down, and Felix Fermin. Felix Fermin gets a 1-6. That's going to be a single. So Fermin is aboard, and McLean has given up his first hit on the second batter of the game, and Carlos Baerga is the batter. He gets a 3-10, and that's going to be a ground ball double play to the pitcher. So it's going to be a 1-4-3 double play. And no runs come in for the um, for the Indians, and we go to the top of the second, top of the second inning, and you've got Don Wirt, the third baseman, facing Nagy. He gets a one nine, and that's a strikeout. First strikeout of the game for either pitcher, and uh, Dick Trzuski is up. Dick Trzuski getting a 4-11. 4-11 is a ground ball first baseman. So there's two down and two down very quickly. But, you know, Nagy had that situation in the first inning and he has still allowed two runs. Mickey Stanley is the batter back to the top of the lineup, 6-10. That is going to be a double. Another hit given up by Nagy. And uh, Al Kaline is the batter. And he gets a 1 8, and that's ground ball short. So he goes out 6 3. And uh, they, the Tigers don't manage to score any runs there. We go to the bottom of the second. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, someone who uh, apparently watches, watches or plays my videos quite often. And that would be Olivia Dufour. So hello to Olivia, if you're watching. <laughs> and I hope you are, certainly. Al Albert Bell will be the batter. He gets a 1-7, and that's a fly ball to left field. Just missed a home run for Albert Bell. F7, one away. And Carlos Martinez is the batter. He gets a 4-9, and a 4-9 is going to be a strikeout. So that's Denny McLean's first strikeout of the game. And we have Mike Aldrete. Mike Aldrete, and he gets a 4-5, and that is going to be a strikeout as well. So McLean strikes out the uh, second two guys that he faces, and again, 
allows nobody on. We go to the top of the third. We're moving right along in this game. Norm Cash. Norm Cash in 1968 had 25 home runs in 411 at bats. And uh, that's a 4 5, and that'll be a fly to center. So Norm Cash is out. Now, I bought these, uh, the 68 set, I bought off of eBay, as I uh, noted before. And so uh, the person who had it previously wrote all kinds of, like, notes on the cards, which in some cases are helpful. Like, um, we have Willie Horton, who's up now with the 36 home runs, and he had a slugging average of 543 because the person wrote that in, because that was not listed on the card originally, like Stratomatic did. That is a 5-5, five, five, and that'll be a ground ball to the second baseman. So he goes out 4-3. to three. And uh, that brings up Bill Freehand, the catcher. And he gets a 1-7, and that's a line out to shortstop. So Nagy gets him 1-2-3 here. That's the first time that's happened. We go to the bottom of the third. It's 2 nothing 68 Tigers. You would expect the 68 Tigers... To win this game by a really good margin, but right now it's only a two-run lead, and Mark Lewis is the batter. 3-5, that's going to be a strikeout. So that's the third consecutive strikeout for um, Denny McClain of the Cleveland batters. Dating back to the uh, last inning, Joel Skinner is the batter. He gets a 2-10. That's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher, so he goes out 1-3. And... Chris James, the last hitter in the lineup for the Indians, gets a 3-6, and that's going to be a pop-out to shortstop. So he pops out. No runs come in. We go to the top of the fourth. The Tigers are up, and Dick McAuliffe will be the batter against Nagy, who is still out there for the Indians. 4-8, that is going to be a pop-out to the shortstop. McAuliffe pops out. Northrop is the batter. 6-6. Six, six. And that will be a first, that's the first X chart, second baseman. The second baseman for the Indians is a 4. And, uh... That is a roll of 20. 20 and 4 is an out 1. So he is out. And Don Wirt is the batter. And he gets a 110, and that's going to be a single. So that's the first hit in a couple of innings here for the, uh, for the Tigers. And um, Dick Krzyzewski is the, is the batter right now for Detroit. He gets a 5-10. That is a ground ball to the shortstop. X, the shortstop is a 2. That is an 11. And that will be an out. And that is the end of the inning. 6-4 to four was the uh, out on that. And uh, the Tigers get no runs in the 4th. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with Alex Cole, the top of the Indians lineup, coming up. Now, the one thing I do like about the basic game, and I don't know, because I've been playing the advanced game a lot lately, so I should be just as adept at it as the basic game, but the basic game just seems to go faster. 5-2, Alex Cole... And that will be a fly to right. The right fielder is a 1. That is a 14. Uh, 14 and 1 is an out. So uh, Cole is out. He goes out F9. 1 out. And um, Felix Fermin. Felix Fermin with a hit this game. 6-4. That's going to be a fly to center, though. And that's two down, and Carlos Baerga is up. And he gets a 3-7. That's a line out to the shortstop. And I think a lot of guys, you know, every once in a while you like to see the basic game, I, I think. I think a lot of guys might like that. 
Um, so we're going to the top of the fifth with Dick Krzyzewski not up. It's going to be Mickey Stanley back to the top of the lineup. It's only 2 nothing here. 6-5, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Mickey Stanley strikes out. Uh, Nagy gets him to strike out for only his second strikeout of the game. Nagy in uh, 1991 struck out 109 guys in over 200 innings. So he's not going to strike a lot of people out. K-Line is the batter, and he gets a 5-4. That will be a ground ball to the third baseman. The third baseman is a 3, and that is an 18. 18-3 uh, and three is a one-base error. So Bayerga makes an error. E5 on that. And um, Norm Cash is the batter. And that's going to be a 4-5, and that's going to be a fly to center. That's two down, and, uh, and a man at first, and Willie Horton up. And Willie Horton gets a 5-2. That's a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is a 4. We've established that, and that's going to be big. That's a roll of a 1 is a single 2. So we're going to have runners at the corners. Nagy allowing another hit. And he has to get this guy out, uh, Willie Horton. He's going to burden, um, no, Bill uh, Bill Freehand. He's going to be a tough customer. These All of these Tigers are 5-9. That's a ground to the shortstop. The shortstop's a 2. That's a 14. Probably going to be an out, and it is. So he goes out 6-3, and Detroit does not score any in the fifth. And they maintain only a 2-0 lead. Maybe I should have uh, been a little more aggressive back in the first inning when I had the chance to with this team. But still, um, you got to think McLean is going to be able to shut these guys down. Um, Albert Bell is up. And that will be, we'll re-roll it. Re-roll that. Well, all right, we're going to re-roll everything because it knocked all the dice over. That is a 312. That'll be a fly ball left field. So Albert Bell flies out. One down, and Carlos Martinez gets a 3 4, and that is going to be a double. So Carlos Martinez is aboard up at second base. Maybe they can break through and at least get one here uh, and start start, you know, their comeback, Mike Aldretta, he gets a 5'11". 5'11 is going to be a walk. So Aldrete gets aboard. There's two runners on with only one out. And McLean walked his first guy of the game. Mark Lewis is the batter. He gets a 2'6". That is going to be a single... I think I have to think about sending um, Martinez, but it doesn't seem like he's a runner. He isn't one to ten, so we're going to leave the batters right or the runners right where they are. Uh, McLean giving up a hit, even though it's unlikely as you get down in this Indians lineup that they're going to get hits. But Joel Skinner's up, and he gets a four four, and that is going to be a home run. Joel Skinner hits a home run off of McLean. <laughs> And this is the basic game, so we're not even going to consider whether Joel Skinner has the power to hit that home run. Although he, and he only had one. He only had one home run, but that's how the basic game is. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the Indians take a, a, an unlikely lead here in the basic game and of course I can I can just see Scott Needle at home saying yeah that's why you don't play the basic game or at least one of the reasons uh, but uh, Chris James will be the batter with one down and that is a 6-8 and that will be a round ball to the shortstop the shortstop for Detroit is a 3 and that is a 5 5 and 3 is an out so he's out 6-3, two down, and Chris James up. 
and Chris James gets a 2-5, and that is going to be a single. Oh, wait a minute, no. Uh, two, wait, this is, no, this was Alex Cole. Two five is a fly ball center. So, all right, he flies out. So the, but the Indians do strike for four runs and now they are in the lead. So, you know, maybe I should do this more often with the basic game just to, you know, give the, uh, a slight advantage to the, uh, to the uh, to the underdog team, but Bill Freehand is up. Let's not count these guys up. No, McAuliffe is up. Let's not count Detroit out just yet. I mean, they are only losing by two. That is a one nine, and that'll be a ground ball second. So McAuliffe is out four to three, one away, and Northrop is the batter, and he gets a two seven, which is a ground ball third. So he's out five to three. Now, all of a sudden, Nagy, it's important for Nagy to pitch well from this point on. Don Wirt comes up, and he gets a 4-10. 4-10 is going to be a fly to center. The center fielder is a 4. That is a 4. That's going to be probably pretty big. That is a safe at second on error. So the center fielder makes a two-base error. E8, and that brings up Trzewski. And he gets a 5-6, and that's going to be a fly to left. So no runs come in for the uh, for Detroit in the 6th. We go to the bottom of the 6th inning with the Cleveland, an unlikely leader in this game, 4-2. Uh, we're not going to recap. If you didn't, if you missed it, we're not recapping why that happened. Felix Fermin is the batter. He gets. Is it Felix Fermin? Yes, it is. That is a six-seven, and that'll be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is a two. That is an eight, probably an out from what I remember, and it is. So that he goes out four-three, and Bayerga is the batter. And he gets a 6-9. Six, 6-9 nine. Six, nine for Bayerga is fly ball right field. Two away. And Albert Bell is the batter. And he gets a 4-5. And a 4-5 is a strikeout. McLean with his fourth strikeout of the game. But we're going to the top of the seventh. And um, let's see, no runs for the uh, Indians. We're going to the top of the seventh. Now it is getting late for Detroit. They're down by two, and they got the top of the lineup up. That is a 5-2. That is going to be a ground ball to second. The second baseman for the Indians is a four. That is a 17, and that is an out. One away, and um, Al K line up. He gets a 4-6. That is going to be a walk. Nagy walks the third guy of the game for him. Which brings up Norm Cash. And Norm Cash gets a 4-6, which is a walk. So two guys get on after only one out. Nagy's got to watch it here. He's only got a two-run lead, and uh, I wouldn't count on his team getting any more. Willie Horton gets a 1-7, and that is going to be a, a single double asterisk and score one run. Nagy gives up his fifth hit and his, um, let's see, third run. 
first earn. Runners are at the corners with only one out and free hand up. He gets a 1-6, and that's a walk to load the bases. So the walks have really come back to haunt Nagy here. They're going to try to get him out of this inning with McAuliffe up. 6-11. 6-11 is a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a 2. That is a 19. 19 and 2 is select another. That is a 15. 15 and 2 is an out double play, and they do get the double play that they needed, and so only one run comes in for Detroit. Now it's gonna it's it's uh you you've got a dilemma with replacing Nagy because he's probably one of their better pitchers. Uh, but anyway, um, Detroit did get a did strike for a run, so they're within one, and the score is four three Indians with Carlos Martinez up, and you know you're not taking out um, you're not taking uh, McLean out of the game. Now McLean did allow 31 home runs, so he did have a pension for doing that. Carlos Martinez is up. He gets a 111. That's a ground ball short. 6 3, one down, and Aldrete is up. Aldrete gets a 5 9. That is going to be a strikeout. Fifth strikeout for Denny McLean and Mark Lewis. Up. Mark Lewis gets a 110. That's a pop out to second. So Cleveland maintains a lead here, albeit a tenuous one, by the score of 4 3. And we will take a look at the Cleveland bullpen to see if there is anybody that could come in and potentially be uh, better as a reliever. because they definitely want to try to hold them here. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to say warming up is Jesse Orozco, but we're not going to bring him in yet. Jesse Orozco up in the bullpen with um, Jim Northrup, the batter. And he gets a 6-3. That is a ground ball to the first baseman. The first baseman is a 3. That is a 13 and that's going to be an out. One down and Don Wirt. Don Wirt gets a 2-6. That's going to be a ground ball shortstop. And Dick Trzewski is up. Dick Trzewski getting a 6-7. That is going to be a strikeout. So Nagy has gotten through this inning. And no runs come in for the uh, for the Tigers in the eighth. Nagy with only his third strikeout. Skinner is the batter. Five nine. That is a strikeout. That is the sixth strikeout for McLean, but he is he does stand to be the losing pitcher here. Chris James is the batter. 4-5, and 4-5 is going to be a strikeout. Seventh strikeout for, um, for McLean and Alex Cole, the leadoff batter, gets a 5-3. That is a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a two. That is a 19, probably an out. It's select another. That is a 10. That is a one base error. So McLean throws the ball away and makes a one base error. He really didn't need that. And for me, is the batter. 
and he gets a 2-7, and that is going to be a line out to second base. We're going to the top, top of the ninth here. Detroit needs a run. They have to have a run to tie and two to go ahead. Mickey Stanley, though, is the batter, and he's at the top of the lineup. Jesse Roscoe is still warming up, but won't come in just yet. That is a 5-9 is what we're going to call that, and that's a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is a 2. That is a 20. 20 and 2 is an out. So Mickey Stanley is out. Six to three. Detroit only has two outs left. Al Kaline up. He gets a six seven. That will be a strikeout. Fifth strikeout for Nagy. And we have down to the last out is Norm Cash. And he gets a three eight. And that's a walk. So they have a man aboard. That's Nagy's sixth walk. And Willie Horton is up. And Willie Horton hits a two-run home run. They have just come back. Detroit has come back and made this um, a, a situation where, well, the Indians are in trouble, really. And Bill Freehand is the batter. And he gets a 3-8, and that's going to be a fly to left. So Detroit does take the lead. They have gotten their fifth run of the game, and they now have a 5-4 lead. The Indians have to try to get at least a run to tie and two to win the game, I'm going to take a look at the bullpen for Detroit, although I don't think you could probably find a better pitcher than um, yeah, than him. Um, oh, you know what? No, we're going to go with Don McMahon. So Don McMahon will come on in relief of Denny McClain. Don McMahon in 1968 was 5 and 2 with a 198 earned run average and only allowed 53 hits in 82 innings. So that's what the Indians have to try to score on. And they have Carlos Baerga up. Now they to their credit, they do they do have the 3, 4 and 5 hitters up. So we'll see if that helps. 1-5 is a strikeout. Bayerga strikes out. So there's one down. And Albert Bell up. He could tie the game. But he doesn't. He gets a ground ball to the third baseman. He's out 5-3. to three. And that brings up Carlos Martinez. And he gets a 4-10. That's a ground to the third baseman. The third baseman for Detroit is a 1. That is a 20. That is going to be a roll again. And that is a 16, and that is an out, and that is the game. 5-3. And, uh, yeah, so the final score, the Indians lose a really close one here by the score of 5-4 to four to the Detroit Tigers, who went ahead with two runs in the ninth inning to take the 5-4 lead. And that will be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.